so are you all with uh, the position for a moment? Um, uh, just going to check something. Okay, so while we're looking at this, uh, just going to check the board's okay for my stream viewers. Uh, so I hope it's okay. Um, so okay, it's just starting at the moment. Okay, so Bishop F four was played here. Okay, so what's this bishop doing on B four? Will it go back and black will have an exchange? What about these dark squares? They're a bit more vulnerable than usual. Um, okay. So knight d5 was played and okay does the bishop want to retreat back otherwise it looks as though white's going to get double pawns but what about the g file is there going to be g file compensation um but actually white doesn't want double pawns bishop d2 now a5 okay so does white want to regain this pawn how so well, he actually plays e4 chasing the knight back so this is a sort of typical Catalan position here where okay black's holding on to the pawn for the moment with that knight the bishop's kind of hemmed in uh, bishop e3 now and it looks as though you know maybe you know a break in the center might be on or just putting the rooks like this let's see so actually rook ad1 so it looks as though now there's more evidence that d5 might be on the cards black actually plays e5 and Actually, now White took on e5. He's unveiling, you know, pressure on b6 here. Uh, so Black cannot, you know, play Knight takes e5 without dropping that piece. So Bishop c5 was the idea, actually. Bishop goes back to f4, reinforcing that e5 pawn. Rook e8. Okay. Now. Uh, a careful move King h1 you never know this diagonal might be dangerous in the future so it gets out of the way Knight f8 and it looks as though Knight g6 is going to be good hitting not only uh, g6 um, from g6 f4 and e5 okay but Knight d4 now looks as though it carries with it a serious threat of Knight f5 and if these pawns can be brought together side by side that would be really good for white in theory anyway knight g6 and knight does come to f5 so we get that situation now with these two pawns for a moment looking very good side by side but one is eliminated immediately so white's left with these double pawns and voluntarily gives up the bishop now bishop takes e5 for those of you late starting on this um sorry this is Gelfand versus anand it's in the alakai memorial tournament of 1992 um, for those of you just just coming here, so Queen takes e5. So girlfriend playing white, and um, okay, there's a certain dynamic that white has with with double pawns maybe, and good control of the e4 square. Uh, you know, a lot of things controlling e4 here, and this could be a tempo gainer on that uh, bishop as well. For the moment though, the Queen is kicked back f4. Now queen e7, and now knight e4, so hitting that bishop, which is protected, of course, at the moment. And also, more importantly, is f6 looks like a very dangerous threat for the black's king safety here. So in this position, um, Anand played f6. He's slightly weakened, of course, uh, this diagonal in theory, but is that exploitable? This next move actually seems very nice, b3. Because of course c5 is behind that bishop can't take because of c5. So is he actually getting his pawn back? And maybe with a small advantage. After rook a d8, b takes c4, his pawn has got back. So not material down. So who favours white in this position? Um if if I let you have 20 seconds, um so who would you say is better? White, uh, white or black? Um, 
Anyone? If I give you 20 seconds, would you prefer white or black here? So it's black to move and and to move. If we have this sort of position in the match, who would you favour to win? Let's put it like that. Would you say that these pawns are quite aggressive? They're worth their weight or a bit weak? Or is this knight's really good? Or is black looking good? This knight, is it really good on b6? Kind of restricted on b6. This c4 pawn is, is blunting the knight from coming back to the center. a4 is covered by the queen. <clears throat> so if that knight's not very good, this knight's good. Okay, it looks as though white's got a pleasant position here. Iron Must says, okay, white, uh, that black is better. Okay, but don't ask why. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, anyone else? <clears throat> On stream, it's Kormo Kumraka, it's black. Okay, um, all right, uh, okay. That's interesting. So let's follow the game more now. King h8. So both sides have used, by the way, this move sidestepping the dangerous you know, diagonals. That's interesting. Uh, a bit of trivia about this game. Uh, not that interesting. Okay, but now g4. Okay, and it looks as though, of course, g5 might be on the cards now. Bishop b4. Not seemingly. Uh, Worry too much about g5, and that does actually come now. g5. Black trades is trades rooks, and now wants to trade the other rooks too. Simplifying is maybe a key to the fence, it seems. But this rook has other plans. Rook g1, supporting this g5 break now. Rook g1. Is there going to be a problem for the black king here? Bishop c5, attacking the rook. And the rook now swings back to b1. Okay, so maybe in the future, you know, something like this, b6 might be targeted. I mean, queen b3 to keep hold of these pawns. Rook d4. Now g takes, g takes. So, okay, double pawns versus the two isolated pawns. Now white cashes out with knight takes c5, forcing move, and now seizes that file. Queen e2. Doesn't matter about c4 here. Because maybe this G file can be returned for that rook. This is looking dangerous now for the black king. Um, perhaps and an overestimating his position, unless this is actually uh, dire here. Um, I'm not really sure what black does here. If he moves his queen back, of course, B6 will drop. He can't move his queen back. Uh, rook takes c4. It just doesn't look too hot, this position. He plays actually queen takes c4. And now it looks as though queen e8 is tempting, but maybe queen g8 is the idea. In fact, queen h5 on h6. And now, um, by the way, in that, in that position, if we just have a quick look, if queen e8, I think... You know, Queen G8. Um, this would pick up the bishop. It seems it picks up the bishop, and then also F4 drops, and then actually these two. So that that wouldn't be hot to win that knight. So instead, actually Queen H5. And that might be the reason why Queen H5 was played. So the knight, um, the queen is actually guarding D1. So Rook B6 is possible now. It would seem, um, or not. There's actually queen c ones as well, so maybe not. That's not the threat uh, at the moment. So knight d seven anyway, getting knight out of the way, uh, but dropping the h six pawn, and that's taken. And now a simple move, actually, just bishop f three, and it looks as though this attack is is very dangerous actually. King tries to get out of the way, but now the rook just cuts the king off. So Anand is in big trouble. He resigned here, actually. It's huge threats. It's quite embarrassing how the king has, well, not embarrassing. It's just defenseless, it seems, this position, um, unless there is some magic, which both players missed. But uh, Anand resigned here. Um, 
So that was in 1992. Let's have a quick overview and summary. It was um, okay, an aggressive game by Bryce. The way he accepted double pawns. Uh, I think you will all agree um, with that sentiment. It was played with aggression and dynamism by White. This Catalan and um, you know, Anand was made. His play uh, looks a little passive. Um, White got uh, some nice uh, play now after knight e4. Nice position. And this f6 doesn't look like the sort of move you want to play. So it was kind of pounced on with this g4, g5 break. Um, black. Sorry, I'm um, you're asking me if Black had good chances. Um, <laughs> I, I think really um, this is just a superficial overview, really. I have no idea. If it's only like detailed post-mortem analysis and um, maybe Black had great defensive resources and could have held the balance. But it, it's, it's just, an, just getting an idea of the past encounters, really. So White played um, very aggressively. And it seemed to work out here that this was a very difficult position for black now i think that knight is really putting a lot of pressure on the black position like f6 and c5 blacks under great pressure and the pressure just uh was turned into something quite very very dangerous with these simultaneous threats now so black cracked here it couldn't couldn't hold it it seems uh so okay let's go on to another game between the two now in the Nares tournament of 1993 um, there's another decisive encounter between the two of them if we skip now to 1993 so Anand was playing black actually um, in this game again okay so Boris kicked off again with d4 but instead of getting a Slav in this Lenora's tournament actually we get a Queen's Gambit accepted the pawn was taken Queen's Gambit accepted now quick e4 and um, now black struck in the center quickly with c5 and now d5 so is white going to get his pawn back with advantage knight f6 we get a very sharp line i've seen before in a club match actually um a few months back well actually last year upon it's board one played white in this and um actually destroyed the opponents but for a while they were following this game path um it seems you know players over fide 2300 they have these games committed to memory uh these sort of games um, so b5 very sharp stuff bishop f4 okay uh, queen a5 and now e5 very sharp opening knight e4 and then knight's protected knight a6 and it looks as though knight b4 is going to be extremely useful maybe to d3 f3 kicking the knight but the knight doesn't go anywhere and then uses a peace sacrifice he plays knight b4 he wants to get in his knight d3 check so very exciting position what do you guys think of this peace sacrifice ah oh. <laughs> sorry <laughs> I'm, a, I'm the third trainer ah oh, it's kind of topical though sorry it's it's kind of increasing the interest in the world championship isn't it it will go on youtube after it's we've got to get some interest for this world championship drummed up surely before the events <laughs> you know otherwise uh you know that would be bad for chess wouldn't it if people don't watch the world championship <laughs> so um but anyway this is an interesting piece sack um i guess you know people have covered this game but it looks like an interesting game from 1993 uh, so what happens here 
the peace sack was accepted f takes e4 knight d3 check king d2 now what is going on here how do you guys evaluate uh, this position here do you think white is better or black's better if I give you 20 seconds here so black to move someone on the stream saying black is better Mephisto black Christopher Brewer okay anyone on play chess come on knight f2 black looks fine with knight f2 iron must black should be better mk10 everyone's saying black actually has been better here okay black didn't play knight f2 actually knight f2 the knight is hitting f4 and also e5 in fact Alan plays g6 as if maybe you know he wants that e5 pawn he's not that interested in winning the exchange um or maybe you know takes and bishop h6 would be nasty maybe that's more to the point actually rather than collecting e5 <laughs> oh dear oh dear uh so actually um b3 to try and undermine this knight Red Tiger, I hope I don't talk too much like Fisher because he did go nuts later. I hope I'm not en route to going completely insane with chess. Um, I do have other things in my life. <laughs> I'm hoping that's not the same path for me, but you know, touch wood, yeah. So so here, Bishop G7. Okay. Um, was actually the idea then. What is going on? He's not winning the exchange. Is he just striking at this diagonal? Um, so um, B takes C4. Okay, he's striking at this diagonal. There's lots of tactical liabilities going to pop up here if this bishop takes on E5, and it does. Bishop takes E5. We see it. Pressure points. Pressure all over around the shop. Holding to the position together now with Knight Fe2. It seems, but B4 now. Okay, this looks like a nasty diagonal. I must admit, um, over the weekend, uh, this diagonal was really painful to me. Um, I have a personal interest now in making sure I don't lose pieces on this diagonal to a Fianchetto Bishop. Unfortunately, um, my debut over the weekend in the first game wasn't that impressive, losing in less than 20 moves. I haven't done a video of it yet. Um, I'm saving that up. <laughs> but uh, it's coming on YouTube probably <laughs> okay but uh, here okay White's played Queen a4 check he's losing the rook it seems or, or worse so he gets the Queens off Bishop takes a1 but White has some compensation here unlike in my game so these pawns look as though you know mobile center pawns maybe the Knight can come back mobile center pawns you know maybe the Bishop can come on a diagonal maybe it's not all bad well, we'll see now. So, black castled. Knight d3. So, have we got mobile pawns? Or what? Black's the exchange up. For how many pawns? The pawns are actually equal here. Okay, a5. Black is also a passed pawn here. 2 to 1. g3. Now, bishop g7. Bishop G2, so it looks as though, come on, E5, these pawns are not going anywhere, or surely, or are they? Bishop A6, putting some pressure on White's position. Okay, C5. The pawns are really ambitious here. Rook A6, C6, looking even more menacing, but unfortunately, there's some issues here to deal with. This king is not ideally placed. E6 looks to be on the cards. Can White survive the pressure underneath building up? And also, of course, there's this potentially dangerous diagonal to check the king as well. After the rook c1, in fact, check one played. Now knight e f4. And now, actually, this diagonal is pretty painful after that rook c1, almost exploiting 
the weakness of the last move because now uh, bishop takes d3 leaves unfortunately a nice skewer to be pounced on with e5 ouch more pain given to white oh there oh there can the pawns come to the rescue king c4 dropping of course a piece rookie one still with ambitions of getting the pawns going fg and now e5 oh what is going on is this avalanche really that serious these three pawns here well and then you know is not the best person you want to play if you have like if you are uh, like a rook down if if he's going to find resources if anyone in the world is going to find resources you don't want someone like an end he plays bishop f4 okay so you know of course e5 d6 uh, well, there's, there isn't rook c6 at the moment the bishop supporting c6 so is d6 actually on the card hg bishop takes the rook moves and it's attacked again the rook moves again and the bishop keeps an eye on e5 from that from afar okay bishop h3 the rook is off to get out of the way but if it does so then of course c7 looks menacing it stays there because now if d6 rook takes c6 of course rook e2 attacking that bishop bishop moves Rook e3, the bishop moves again. Rook e4, now the bishop's protected. So, what do you think of White's chances here? Uh, a rook down. Does anyone is anyone optimistic with um, the position here for White? Um, if you want to say that you're optimistic, um, maybe now, in the next twenty seconds. Sorry, ten seconds. Otherwise, we'll just carry on. So, is a rook down? The pawn seems to be locked up actually in, in superficially. But King C five tries to, you know, further liberate them. Is D six really on the cards? Uh Benko Gamters said the G and H pawns will win the day, yeah. There's two to nothing over here, that's a good point. So um rookie seven for the moment anyway. And now it looks as though you know d6 is ruled out because maybe rook takes d6 takes rook e4. So if d6 is ruled out rather cruelly, um, well, white's next move, um, white plays king d4. But let's have a look if king if d6 was played, I assume, I assume rook takes d6. Tanks, tanks. C seven. Oh, this is tricky stuff. What, what would black play here? Have I got the, got this right? You know, I I wonder about just sacking the bishop, right? And then just sacking the rook. And if we have a look at this ending, is that any good for black? Because we got we got a four here. How does this bishop handle all these pawns? Is that actually technically possible? I mean, say, I I don't know if that's actually possible. For the bishop to hold the pawns, um, bishop and king. Sorry, okay. Does anyone want to say anything about that? Sorry, uh, okay. In this position, d6. Were there any improvements on rook takes d6 here? Anyone? Rook takes d6. Do you all agree with that or disagree? That must be the idea, surely. Rook takes the pawn on the fifth. Yeah, that's even better, isn't it? <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, there's no C7. 
and you just blockade. Oh, that's much easier. <laughs> Forget all the other analysis. That's just as crap as the analysis I did over the weekend. Sorry about that. Sorry, yeah. Just rook takes e5 check. Yeah, there's nothing, is there? All right, so that explains king d4, just in case anyone was wondering. King d4. Um, so now it looks pretty dire. Uh, so f6. Undermining uh, white's pawns. And they all start to fall. Check. Check. And here white resigns. All right, that was an interesting piece, Sack. Uh, so the dynamism in this game in 1993 was with black. Black played the creative, you know, dynamic piece, Sack. So let's have a look at that again. So who would have thought the Queen's Gamut accepted could be really, really exciting? It's as if you're pretending to be materialistic at, at the start. In fact, let's look at it, flip the board. So you pretend to be materialistic at the start, but really, um, you're aiming for this dynamic peace sacrifice. What a beautiful idea that actually this C pawn is supporting this kind of stuff. It's really dangerous. So it's just giving up that um, knight because that bishop is blocked in by the knight. I'm able to pounce in with this peace sack. Let's just appreciate the dynamic beauty of this kind of chess. So just bishop g7, a quiet piece sack. And after b3, just aiming at targets on the diagonal. And it all sort of crumbled here um, for white. It started crumbling anyway. Um, oh, if. Okay, so these pawns were just questioned. Were, were they worth you know, the material? And um, clearly not. Uh, Whites didn't have the pawn mobility he needed. So anyway, let's have a look at another game. Okay. So now, historically, I thought we'd pick 1996 now in the Dos Hamas Spain tournament. Anand was white against Boris. So in Spain we go. 1996 e4 okay does harmless Spain 1996 category 19 tournament c5 Sicilian defense knight f3 none of the poxy anti Sicilians we might get in club chess regularly like c3 and other stuff no they've got time to know their theory d6 after d4, okay, we get, uh, what do we get? We get a6, Nidorf, bishop e3, e5. So, as some of you know, I had a dual commentary video on the Nidorf with uh, GM Daniel King. If you haven't seen that on YouTube, it's well worth a look. It's about 40 minutes. And he's an absolute guru uh, with the uh, Nidorf, of course. And it's amazing, you know, the dynamism that uh, if you play it well you can get so anyway but uh boris um you know against anand here let's see what he did so bishop e7 bishop c4 the standard kind of idea keep control on d5 but you might think well a4 what about a4 not needed necessarily both sides castle knight c6 now bishop g5, not minding uh, tempo losing. If we can exchange off, you know, d5, be a bit weaker intuitively. Bishop e6, not minding double pawns. Let the pawn come to the center. Maybe f fold pressure to cool d5 with that pawn. Bishop b3. No hole healing in this game with bishop takes e6. No, bishop b3. If you want to exchange, you take. Give the uh, dynamism and the hole is still weak so knight a5 and now white makes the hole more evident with bishop takes f6 giving up the dark square bishop and goes into it with knight d5 okay bishop g5 black has the bishop pair it reminds me a bit actually of 
all the pox these Sicilian Sveshnikov games I used to have as a junior. So black has the bishop pair and maybe this exciting idea of f5 later. But white has this d5 possession. So queen d3 and now rook c8. Again, pressure just being reinforced on d5 with that rook rather than the other rook. King h8 and now knight c3. Where is the knight heading? Why did it retreat? Well, it involves d6 pressure. What does black do about d6? Forced on the defensive. Now knight goes back. So bishop g5, is this a draw invitation? No. No, knight c3 is not played. King h1 now. So it's always kind of a useful move, uh, you know, this king h1 business occurs in all sorts of games, just improving the king's safety a little bit. Um, but it's not as if it looks as though white wants to play f4 at any time soon. Um, bishop h6, knight c3 again. Now the bishop on h6 is not going to come to e7, so what about this d6? Well, black has this other idea now. Ah, oh, I'm a, on, why not knight takes g5? Is there any danger for white? Okay, hold on a sec. So in this position after bishop g5, he, so and then play king h1. So you're saying knight takes g5. Well, that bishop isn't compatible with the pawn chain d6 and e5, is it? So maybe black doesn't have too many problems here, I assume. And f5 might be coming up soon. So I don't know, you know, maybe king h1 was preferred for that reason. Um, so if we go back to so bishop h6, knight c3, and now we get an exchange on b3. Queen b6, eyeing f2. And this is weird. I, you know, sometimes I'm wondering about these Allen games and how GMs just retract their own moves and then now plays king g1 believe it or not but i suppose it's as if king h1 provokes queen b6 because is the queen really ideal on b6 so moving back with the king you know does it is it a big deal in this position doesn't really matter what you played before does it you don't have to have this rule of consistency of what you move based on what you did previously in the game the queen's on b6 i mean is it brilliant there Rook c6. Now queen e2. Okay, queen e2 looks like a profound sort of move. Maybe you know the idea is to double the rooks on d6. Or maybe the queen at some point can go like over here. Um, let's see how it unravels. Queen c7, now knight e1. And it looks as though you know maybe this kind of thing might be useful f5 now knight d3 black took getting some dynamic play on the f file so it looks really like a sveshnikov sicilian d5 is a bit weak black's got a bit of dynamism black has the dynamic bishop pair queen f7 okay so how do you evaluate this position after queen f7 who thinks, uh, well, white is better or black is better? So 20 seconds, say your you know, view, if I give you 20 seconds, starting from now. Gugger 1204 says even MK10 Jorish Caligula 443 on stream says black has bishop power and pressure Benko Gambit to double edge here Papery white should be better with active knights in the center Mephisto XXX on stream almost equal bishop pair may be a bit something which I can't read okay black is with more dynamics per five and okay interesting interesting it well when I was a junior, I used to play this Reshkov, and if you didn't get the tactics going, you know, you could lose because of that d5 square. 
uh, you could lose if your counterplay sniffed out. Uh, there's actually a, a nice game, Karpov against John Nunn in this version of, or something similar. Uh, well, and um, if the counterplay sniffed out of the black position, then you're left with bad structure. Okay, uh, so queen e2, queen g6, f3, which looks ordinarily to be a weakening move you wouldn't ha uh, want to play, but here it's starting to restrict maybe black's possibilities, and perhaps in this exact position, f3 is, is what white needs to do um, to kind of try and get a grip on these two light squares. Uh, also, of course, bishop g4 would have been maybe a threat. Uh, so f3 rules out bishop g4. Uh, so bishop f5 was played now. Now knight b4 eyeing that d5 square. Goes into d5 with a vengeance. Knight e4 going on to both squares. The other point of f3 is revealed. Support the knight on e4. So these knights are looking pretty nasty on e4 and d5. This bishop looks a bit of an empty bishop, as someone's just mentioned. Benko Gamta. Bishop on h is shooting at nothing. You're right, it's shooting at nothing here. Uh, it can't even use f4, can it? Because that knight has got the option to take. Bishop g5, it starts wriggling anyway. Back to support e7. Here, just in time from the knight and rook firing at. Sorry, d6. Rook d3, as if doubling of rooks is going to occur, which looks bad for d6. Rook c8, and now black's going on to the offensive. Look at these defensive pieces around this d6 pawn. All trying to defend d6. Knight d5. Bishop goes back even further. Rook c3. Interesting move. What is this really fretting? Because if takes, I, you know, that structure, you'd have a6 as a target, but you'd have to move the knight, and wouldn't e4 drop unless you move the knight back there? Let's see what happened. h5, king h1, h4, as if black's trying to drum up some counterplay here. h3. And now where is black's attack? To king g8, now rook c4, another point of rook c3 revealed. The rook might be useful laterally, and if it takes, then you know maybe that's unpleasant to get another pawn towards the center. Iron grip on d5. Queen h5, as though there's some tactical idea going about to occur with a bishop sack. The pressure is about to increase on black here dramatically after knight e3. It looks as though knight g4 might be on the cards. For example, as well as knight takes f5 as an interesting option, d5. It looks desperate. d5. Why did black have to play d5? Interesting. Black plays d5. Okay, let's follow through, just just and go back to this position. Sorry, you say knight takes d6 was on here. Oh, maybe rook takes c6 takes, then knight takes d6. Yeah. How does black defend here? Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's it's looking nasty. So d5, and also maybe he wants to swing the rook in for the attack. So that's the other point. And it seems to invite that. Knight takes d5. Bishop takes h3. Wow. Unfortunately, after g takes, rook takes f3. Okay, black is now threatening to win the queen. But uh, there's a crushing move here. If if queen g2, you know, maybe uh, there's rook g6. And how does this queen defend h3? You'd all be scared there, wouldn't you? In that position. Huh? But there was no worries for white in this position. So can you guess what white played here? 
I hope you've got the notation tab closed on Play Chess Com. Sorry, for that really helps these guess the move quizzes. So guess what White played here? Really crushing final move uh, to avoid any problems. So 20 seconds starting from now. Can you all guess after 20 seconds? By the way, if you're going to say a knight, specify which knight. Yeah, qualify your knight if you're going to say a knight. Which knight? Where? If you're going to say a knight. If it's needed to be qualified, you know. Knight f2 looks safe, does it? Benko Gambita. Interesting. Knight f2 looks safe. Hmm. I don't think knight f2 looks safe. If knight f2, rook takes h3 check, don't you just win the queen? Okay, okay, yeah. The final move was knight e f6 check. You see, this rook is really useful for rook g4 to break the connection of, of this protection. So for example, takes, um, takes. And if rook takes, then this queen takes h5. And if g takes, you break the connection with rook g4 check. So you just take, it's quite brutal, really. Yeah. So that was quite ingenious how if we rewind this game and let's have a look at this rook maneuver to c4. It looked quite ingenious. Uh so after knight e f6, you know, Boris uh, resigned, yeah. So he resigned after this check. Yeah. But uh, let, let's review this game. So Sicilian defense and um sort of transposed into a Sveshnikov pawn structure. There is a relation between the Neudorf and the Sveshnikov as this game shows. What was interesting um, about it, particularly, um, you know, the Rook maneuver seems very interesting, uh, which we saw. Uh, that, you know, this upcoming Rook maneuver seems really <coughs> classy <clears throat> so initiated with rook c3 okay okay now h5 and then th then we saw the rook coming to uh, c4 soon so rook c4 and uh, white had you know a very interesting position uh, to be able to defend against Black's counterplay. So Queen H5, Knight E3, and also put pressure on D6. Uh, so it's also threatening Rook takes C6 as well as defensive duties. Uh, it's also you know D6 is is in big big question over D6 here. Yeah. Uh, so, phew, what a, what a position! Um, it's it's a lot of pressure for Black. So he tries this and it just didn't work out. Unfortunately, the tactic broke down. Knight e f six check refutation tactic. Uh, so Anand can refute Gelfand's tactic back in nineteen ninety six. Let's have a look at another game. Okay, so ah, do we want to look at a blitz game? Does that give us any real insights or not? If you want, I can skip a blitz game. No, then just going on to a rapid game. So we're in blitz territory now. Okay, for the next two games, we're we're in blitz territory. Let's look at them anyway. Um, as some of you know, 
I actually prefer sometimes Blitz Chess than the non games, and it's great that GMs get to play in Blitz tournaments as well. So, this is the World Blitz Cup of 2007. Sounds a great deal of fun to me, yeah. <laughs> so, um, Alan was 2801 and Boris was 2736. I think on the internet, Blitz Chess is the most popular form of chess, but um, in you know, for serious over the board players. You know, there's a big place for one day games, seven hour sessions still. But uh, no, Blitz is fun as well. So let's have a look. So Knight F3 by Anand and Boris plays D5. So um, D4 and after Knight F6, C4, E6, Catalan territory, G3. And the pawn is accepted here. So the revolt, the roles are reversed. If we remember the, the previous like long game encounter, uh, you'll remember that Gelfan was playing the Catalan dynamic thing with white and Anand was black. Why have they reversed roles in this blitz game? So Gelfan is, is going for the C4 pawn uh, and trying to hold on to it, perhaps. So Knight C6 and he's making efforts to hold on to it now with B5. So is it a clear pawn for black or is there loads of compensation for white? Actually really hard opening position to evaluate. So if I gave you 20 seconds here, what do you think? Do you think white's better or black's better for the pawn? Has white got enough? What do you reckon? Would you take white or black here? Anyone? MK10 says I would I would say black is slightly better. Black Gaga 1204 black is better. Don't think that white is compensation. Uh, P5 says white. Anyone else? Okay. When it's a blitz game though, and material isn't so important uh, in blitz because it's more difficult to defend. You don't want to like lose on time trying to find an accurate defense, for example. Uh, so in this blitz context, you know, maybe this this is fine, you know, this sort of stuff. So Queen E2, Bishop E7, and now Rook D1. And it looks as though, you know, White's preparing up you know, for E4 and D5 at some point. Knight D5, E4, took, castled. So White plays h4, lovely move. I love this sort of move. I, this is the sort of move I love playing in Blitz because you give the knight a really aggressive, crude, you know, square to go for the soft spot sometimes. Uh, so queen e8 looks a bit strange to block in the rook like this. Queen e8, supporting c6. Bishop f4, eyeing that c7 pawn for a moment. The bishop goes back to defend it. Now h5, and it looks as though h6 could be a useful attacking move. f6, and one of the points is revealed that from e8 it's now attacking h5. h6 anyway, okay. e5. And the structure of black is damaged here. Look, structural damage. King safety, a bit less than before, maybe. Bishop e3. But is this a nasty pin? There's no eviction with h3. The h pawn, look, no h pawn to kick the bishop. Ouch! How painful is that? Maybe not that painful. White plays a4. And now knight e7. White takes and then plays rook a6, eyeing f6. Also, maybe preparing to double rooks if needed. Knight g6 and then queen d2 fret immediately winning the exchange. King sidesteps that. Doubles rooks now, controls the a file. Has the position sufficiently transformed? All those people that said black earlier, are you changing your mind now? Has white got nice compensation here? If you want to say, or we'll just move on. So e takes d4, 
bishop takes d4 offering it seems no it's not because f6 sorry pardon me <laughs> f6 is only defended by that and we've got now two pieces on f6 so knight e5 to defend f6 queen f4 putting on the pressure on f6 threatening now knight takes e5 black takes f on f3 to try and loosen that pressure takes on f3 again and now play c6 to block that rook maybe from f6 okay white breaks through though it seems with this next move I have a kind of deja vu I might have covered this game in the in the past quite a few months back quite some time back um, white now plays e5 which is a neat tactical shot uh, because if takes uh, there's bishop takes e5 check here because of that rook you know so e5 is possible here and it seems to be breaking through so rook c8 and now this is looking nasty e takes f threatening f7 mate or mating and as well as winning the queen uh rook f7 rook a8 it's nasty all of black's pieces are starting to be under fire queen e6 and the other rook comes in to try and lift the blockade if this f7 can be forced through be very bad so black's under too much pressure i think after queen d7 a beautiful move here crashing through can you spot it if i give you 20 seconds starting from now anyone quite a forcing well sort of move um, okay some of you have said it yeah well done to those that found it Queen takes e6 because if, if takes then um, then uh, rook takes d8 is it's like a mating because of that pawn or even f7 is mating uh, Queen f6 Bishop f6 or just even rook takes f6 is just mate straight away rook takes f8 so so Queen takes c6 King g8 looks pretty desperate takes the queen and just uses the pin now to win the piece bishop b6 oh dear that was the end of that wow um <clears throat> so that <clears throat> that was a blitz game i'm losing my voice so shall we make this the last game oh dear <clears throat> i mean should we try for one more game i'm getting a bit croaky um, we could quickly do an overview and summary of this to try and reinforce some game patterns so why it seems to generate compensation but how this H pawn push undermine black's king safety and he used the a farm and he sort of managed to get pressure on f6 which results in this tactical blow e5 which set up this decoy combination with queen takes c6 crushing and then he finally won a piece <clears throat> let's go on to another game so uh now this is another blitz tournament um <laughs> uh, and the tournament rapid oh rapid is it 30 minute chess 30 minute and the tournament rapid so that dutch billionaire ustrum was sort of sponsoring either rapids or blindfolds i prefer the rapids um so this is a rapid okay so it was of 2008 so c4 from anand boris replies knight f6 after knight f3 c6 solid slav quite 
with e3 none of this giving up a pawn in this game just e3 it's the pin variation bishop g4 so getting that light square bishop now black voluntarily gives up the light square bishop so it's like a sort of French defense without the bad bishop and black can try and usually play for e5 or something like that actually he doesn't put his bishop to d6 here he, he actually pins the knight maybe to try and stop e4 for a moment both sides castle and if white wastes a move of a3 then it's more justified maybe just to go back to d6 uh or even no i think going back to d6 but uh or even even maybe like this so rook d1 and now black has knight b6 sorry black plays knight b6 c5 so why why did uh vichy close with c5 usually if you play c5 you're asking for black to prepare e5 at some point in the future because uh, there isn't the pressure has been taken off d5 the bishop now wriggles back to c7 so it looks as though e5 e4 is a strong strategic threat here bishop f1 and now e5 it looks as though black's doing very well here but uh, how do you guys vote do you like black's position here if I give you uh, say 10 to 15 seconds so who likes white or black here in this position girl, girl says white five and black Caligula black okay black I think the majority vote is black majority vote seems to be black I prefer black white's got the bishop pair um yeah white has the bishop pair but black has this space in the center and maybe you know an attack and it's rapid so I prefer black so b5 rookie eight of the knight e2 knight e4 and uh, actually, actually, after this next move, Bishop d3, as a nice little clever tactic played by Boris. So maybe Bishop d3 was a little blunder. Knight takes c5. Because if it takes, then, you know, e4. Bishop h7 check. Because he's desperado. King goes back. So he's only got the bishop. The bishop pair has gone. Only the dark square bishop, and that looks a bit pox. He's only got pawns on dark squares, and this this diagonal is that good. So um, e4, and also c5 is now weak. But so what about d5? Well, there's e4 now, and he's liberated his bishop, and this soft spot's been emphasised in some variations. C takes D5 here. If I saw that Bishop H6, there's Queen F6. There's also the hit the rook. So Bishop E3, maybe he wants the bishop on, on D4. Knight B D3. Knight B4. Queen D6. Eyeing H2. Looks horrible. Queen G3. Now black doesn't do uh, the exchange of queens he plays queen d7 attacking the queen and attacking b5 okay where would the queen uh, go here um, Anand plays the seemingly horrible move f4 because it leaves this sort of central pawn mobility these pawns in theory could crash down if this blockade didn't exist d4 it looks horrible now i think um game didn't last very long here knight takes d3 d takes e3 and look this diagonal could be useful 
knight e5 and now this pawn is just taken and now uh, Anand's last move of the game because now after knight g4 he, it looks as though he's threatening um, knight f6 check um, that's snuffed out with this next move can you spot it so blacks play a, a, a tactical move here and it's the last move of the game so what did Boris play here um, he does various defensive moves anyway and um, it looks as though anything will do he's got a great position um, he's two pawns up um, doesn't seem to be many serious threats from white but he played a neat looking move so can you guess it so black to play here 20 seconds starting from now okay well I don't know rookie six does seem possible maybe there's there's various defensive moves <clears throat> This looks cute anyway. It was actually Queen G5. So he's using that pin on the Queen. White resigned here. Guards F6 and attacks F4. Um, he's already two pawns up. Okay. So, um, all right, let's have a quick review of this game. Um, so this this was the bishop pin variation where white is given the two bishops but black gets this strong e5 e4 in this game and strong for other reasons as well knight takes c5 nice tactic so he's got central pawn mobility and he's, he's material up a horrible knight on d3 it was it was only a 30 minute game and rapid so don't take this game too seriously um f4 is just horrendous and uh, but there was neat sort of tactic demonstrated queen g5 okay um yeah i hope you enjoyed this selection of games this week maybe we can look at a few more next week um or carry on looking at some sparf games um okay okay uh thanks very much i think i'm gonna stop here because i had a croaky voice and um um yeah hope you have fun during the week with chess if you play any chess during the week okay thanks very much until next week i'll put this on youtube com kings crusher if you want to review the video or, or on the play chess server of course but there's some other videos you might want to check out on on youtube com kings crusher as well but also my library on the play chess server you can resize the board etc uh, so I've got a library room on the server itself uh, if you want to look at past broadcasts okay thanks very much okay um, who is my favorite Casey Kasparov I think and Fisher favorite world champions okay thanks very much